and welcome to Skills to Pay the Bills and today's segment of Build Your Difference. I'm your host, Pierre Walters, and I'm excited about today's guest. She is a prolific speaker, coach, blogger, and author of five books, including The Game Changer. Is it five o'clock yet? The Manual for Ultimate Executive and Ce Celebrity Assistant Efficiency, based on her popular worldwide blog, Tips for the Efficient Executive Assistant. Building from that success, she is soon to launch her most ambitious and important project to date, Job Interviewing Strategies for Teens. So please welcome Pamela Bodley. Pamela, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for that beautiful introduction. It is, it is my you. pleasure. We are so glad to have you on the show today. I'm so happy to be here. Pamela, you are a prolific writer. Thank you. You really are. And, and, and I want to I wanna dive into job interviewing strategies for teens. This book, this is the foundation, I understand, for many of your workshops, as well as uh, a workbook that you, that you have coming out yes. in the spring. Is that right? Could you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, absolutely. So the book Job Interviewing Strategies for Teens um, all started with my own sons. I have two sons, and when they were teens, I would teach them how to go on job interviews by doing role playing, letting them know that you have to go in, even if you're interviewing at fast food, I need you to dress like a boss. <laughs> OK, shirt, tie, shoes, slacks. So they would go in and I would teach them role playing and I would ask them questions, you know, like tell me about yourself. What do you know about our business? You know, why should we hire you? And test them on these questions, get their responses and then tweak their responses. So then when they're there, they know exactly and they're hitting every single, you know, question. Mm -hmm. So that's where this book started. And now it's a workshop, a four day workshop and the teens and the youth, they really seem to love it and they seem to respond to it. Now Pamela, why? Because I can tell this is so. This is this is not only pa this is something you're passionate about, yeah. but this is also that something that is very personal to you. Because yeah. as you said, it started right in your own home. Yes. But why do you think this is so important for teenagers across the country to get involved with and to understand? Um, I think it's really important. I mean, you you heard uh, it takes a village, right? No one person, no one entity, no one organization or business can help the teens. We have to do it together. Yeah. So um, I like to collaborate with other organizations and bring these skills, these life skills, these career and job skills to the teens because you don't know what you don't know. Right. And I wish that when I was a teen that someone was there to teach me these things and give me a heads up and a leg up so that I can go in like a boss early at 15 and 16 instead of you know, learning along the way, which is how most adults learn how to interview you know, through trial and error. So I'm trying to give them this opportunity of knowing how to um, interview with the jobs early on in life so that they can hone that skill as they get older. I, I hear you. When, when I was a teenager, I didn't have any uh, anything like this. I mean, right. the closest that I had to any kind of professional training or job training uh, was uh, in high school. You know, just taking like an economics course or something and, and mm -hmm. filling out, app, like not job applications, but just assignments from the teacher. Mm -hmm. So my question for you is, you know, that what you've developed is so in-depth and it's so precise. What, what sets your workshops apart from other opportunities that, that kids, you know, I don't know that there are other opportunities that kids might have to learn this. So what, sets, what makes your workshops different? Thank you for that question. Um, I, when I created the workshop, I, 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 different was, I was all about different okay. because I didn't want it to look or feel or be like anything else that's out there. So in my workshop, when, I don't know, when you think of the word workshop, maybe you might think of like a school setting, but for me, it's more like an event. So when I put my workshop on, I come in, there's theme music because music, you know, gets the teen's attention. You come in with music and with a big sound, I bring my Bose speakers and, you know, they have a big sound and it introduces me and it gets their attention. So when I come in for the workshop, you know, we're ready to get started. Um, I'm ready for questions. You know, what do you guys want to learn? So it's very engaging, very informative. And I'm not saying that there aren't other workshops out there like mine, okay. but I just think that what I'm bringing, the content, it's a real talk workshop. I am from Bronx. New York so it's a real talk workshop where I'm engaging and interacting with them constantly throughout the whole workshop I'm not just talking and speaking at them I'm speaking with them okay that's pretty much that that's what and when I was saying about my high school experience mm -hmm. getting uh, it was just being talked at yeah just I was just being talked at. that's why I, I retained none of it right so so what you're doing I think is phenomenal because you like you said you're engaging yes you're speaking with them 
And I think, you know, when I was a teenager, if, if, what I can remember was I learned best by doing. Right. I learned best by getting up and practicing. Right. And sometimes I learned best by failing. Mm -hmm. But I never had the opportunity to fail if I'm just answering questions on a, on a worksheet all day, exactly. you know? So uh, this, this is, I think, a really incredible experience. Now, I understand that you, you, have, you have five books. At, at least five. Yeah. At least five. Oh my goodness, at least five books. Yeah. So, okay, I want you to tell us a little bit more about uh, the book uh, You Learn Tips for College Students to Master Admin Jobs. Did I get that title right? Yes. Okay, what can college bound students take away from that book? Um, for college bound students or students in college, um, if you have a specific industry that you'd like to get in, you know, go in, you guys already, they know, they know how to type already, they know how to use the internet, they have computers, you know, go in as an admin. You know, if you know how to type and answer phones, it, whatever specific um, industry they want to go into, you know, go in as a clerk or an admin and get your foot in that way. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I think there used to be a, a, a trope or a, 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 a word, like a, a phrase or whatever, a cliche, which was start in the mailroom. Yes. And what you're saying is, no, 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 don't start in the mailroom. Start as an admin. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. I imagine you're exposed more to, to the communications, exactly. obviously the leadership, exactly. probably the C-suite in, in whatever organization. That is, that is, I don't know why. I mean, come on. That is clever. That is clever <laughs> and you. it is intelligent and it cuts straight to where yeah. you want to go if you, if you really want to progress in a particular in a particular industry absolutely how did you how did you come to that realization um, you know what just growing up and be I was an admin I was an executive assistant for like 20 some odd years mm -hmm. and um, at just putting it together with the teens and raising my own sons you know um, I just put it together I'm like you know what co what college students can do where they already have the skills basically you know they mm -hmm. know the typing and the skill and the internet um, they should start at an admin if you want to be a nurse and you're just 20 years old or whatever, you know, apply for an admin position in a, in a temp agency mm -hmm. and get your foot in that way. This way you're, you're in the environment that you would like to be when you, you know, graduate and be in your career and you don't know who you're going to meet while you're there. Right. So that's why I say put yourself in the environment that you would like to be in. Right. And, it's, and, and as, I, as they say, just to underscore, uh, it's not always... Uh, what you know, but who you know. Correct. Right? And so Correct. putting yourself in that environment allows you to make those connections That's in a exact. more natural. Yeah. That, you know what? That's exactly right. Why didn't I have you as a coach <laughs> when I was just getting started? <laughs> well, listen, that's why I'm out here for the teens and the youth now to be here to help them. So, okay, you, you, are, not, um, you are not only a career coach, but you are also in many ways a life coach. Wouldn't you say? Somewhat, yeah. Somewhat, okay. So now I'm referring to a very specific book that you wrote, okay. A Lifetime Bond. Oh, yeah. Now that is, a, I'm, I'm reading now, that is a story of how to effectively build trust starting from infancy through adolescence and adulthood. How did you first see this desperate need in society and then formulate and provide steps for anyone to learn familial bonding. Nice. I like the way you put that. You. Yeah, it's actually just a story about, it's my own story about raising mm -hmm. my sons. And my sons turned out to be such amazing human beings and young men that I'm, I was just so proud to tell the story of how I helped them cre to create that. Because we mold our children and what we put into it is what we get out of it. It's just like a bank. Mm -hmm. If you're not making any deposits, you're not going to have anything to withdraw. Mm -hmm. So, you know, starting from when they were babies, and, and some parents may disagree with this, but my mother taught me to pick him up whenever he cries. Now, some people will say, no, that's not good, you know, let them cry, it's good yeah. for them. I say, every, it worked. Yeah. I mean, every time he cried, I would pick him up, and it taught him trust. Yeah. When you're an infant, you don't know anybody. So you need to learn trust. And so at two months old, so between the ages of two and four months, he didn't, my first son did not cry at all because he would scratch the mattress mm -hmm. and I'd say, mommy's coming. And he would not cry because he already learned trust right. that I would trust. So my, the book is about, you know, the decisions that I made from, from infancy, even through adults and how I, you know, help them become the men that they are. I help them choose how to, parents, it's important to teach your kids how to choose their friends. Mm. That is important. 
and there's a section on that. All my books are available on PamelaBodley.com. Amen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I just want to say mm -hmm. that what you just said about uh, when, when your sons were, were small, when they were babies, and, and you took the time to, to pick them up yeah. when they cried. I mean, so that they could learn that, I guess, that, that, that initial foundational lesson of trust, of that trust. they can trust you. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I'm just going to say, we, we hear so much in the news about, uh, you know, young men, men of color, yes. who are uh, being, it seems sometimes targeted uh, inappropriately by law enforcement mm -hmm. or other um, systemic issues. Yeah. Okay. And I, I, I just, it makes me feel so good to know that, you know what, while that's the narrative that we hear oftentimes, we, we, we can change that. We mm -hmm. can change that. I mean, and, and while there are, there are a lot of things that require maybe lead legislation and all that, there's also things we can do at home. Yes. And, and not only that, but as teenagers, there are things that, 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 I'm not a teen, but we can do as a community, but also as teenagers, to, to sort of take more control of our own destiny. And what mm -hmm. you're doing with your workshops is you're providing a very practical uh, way yeah. forward where, right. where sometimes you know maybe kids maybe inner city kids I mean kids in all yeah. areas may, yeah. may feel that there isn't a way forward right and may feel discouraged right and that's so, who I'm targeting yeah. I want to help the inner city the low income doesn't matter the race ethnicity mm -hmm. none of that matters if you want to get guidance and I'm here that's what my workshops do um, it, I find a gap in society mm -hmm. and then I fill it mm find a gap in society and then you fill it. Yeah. yeah. And so there are a lot of gaps in society. There are a lot of gaps. <laughs> so and you're going to be busy for a long time. I hope, I hope to be. <laughs> I hope to be. And one thing I wanted to just add about, mm -hmm. that, about the book is um, for teenagers, having teenagers, it can be a very harrowing time for any parent. Mm -hmm. But I'll just say to any parent, if your teen comes in clearly upset, angry about something, don't just ignore that and say, oh, he'll be all right. Go find out what's wrong. Go and talk to them. And I think a lot of the times kids feel abandoned because they don't have anyone to talk to, anyone who really listens to them. Wow. All right. That, I love that. I absolutely love what I'm hearing. And, and, and this, is, this is life lessons for all of us. <laughs> so look, we're going we're gonna to take a quick break. But when we return, uh, we're going to hear more from from the amazing Pamela Bodley. Pa Pamela Bodley. Stay tuned. Uh, I'm like tearing up here. Stay tuned. We have more after these important messages. special guest, Pamela Bodley. Now, prior to the break, we were discussing your books, yes. and we were discussing the incredible impact that, you, that you're that you making in society, and you said, and I, I love this, you said, what you want to do is look for the, I think you said the gaps mm -hmm. in society, yes. and you want to fill those gaps, yes. and that really moved me. And, and so, now I have a question for you, and this question is, uh, we, we've discussed how your books are making an impact in the community. We, we discussed how your mission is, is geared towards the community and for families. Mm -hmm. but, but, but are your resources also useful for organizations and people groups like ministries or, or, or churches? Um, because 
from what I understand, it can start a conversation around the ways in which we bond as society. I want to know, can organizations use these resources? And if so, what are some key truths that you want, you want us to, 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 to walk away with? Okay, the answer is yes. Um, organizations um, can use my resources. Uh, uh, youth groups, um, youth bureaus can uh, find my book and find it useful. So they can learn from the book and teach whatever group they have of teens and they can bring my you know, um, information to the teens. So yes, organizations can definitely use the resource. Um, uh, uh, for the college students, I think every organization or business wants a good college student and you want a college student who wants to be there. Mm -hmm. What better employee is there than having an employee who wants to be there, <laughs> right? They show up at work because they want to be there. Yeah. So you, in that, you're going to get enthusiasm from that employee, you're going to get initiative from that employee because they chose you. Yeah. They were just lucky enough and happy to be hired, but they chose you to be there. So, yes, I think there is some benefit for yeah, that. What a great strategy, truly. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, okay, so how, how long have you been doing this as a coach, as a, uh, as, a, um, as a career coach and also in some ways as a life coach? How long have you been doing this? Um, I would say in 2011. Um, I started doing it because um, in, 20, in 2008, when they had that big layoff, you know, I got cut from that. Okay. So I had to reinvent myself. Oh, that's when you did your pivot? Yes. Okay. So I reinvented myself. And this uh, uh, team workshop started off as something I was doing in the community for free mm -hmm. to give something back and to, you know, for me to have something to do since I'm not working. Mm -hmm. And it kind of just grew and caught on. And so now here we are. How has, uh, how has, over the over the past decade you you know you working in this area and and really changing lives how has this affected your own family you know in terms of your calling and in terms of you know maybe their perception of you how has this changed your family life I would say that my family is so supportive I mean this whole thing came because my sons said mom you should teach this oh. So it came, started with them. Okay. They literally said, because they're doing so well, mm -hmm. they said, Mom, you should teach this. And that was back in 2010, and by 2011, I was doing it for free. Mm -hmm. And you know, who knew that there was such a, a great need? I knew that there was a need, but the, the, the response I'm getting is, is wonderful. Mm -hmm. what, is the, what is the legacy that you would like to leave for future generations? What is the impact that you want to have? That I cared enough to do something about a problem that I cared enough to step in and do something about a problem that just I'm just not complaining about it. Mm -hmm. Yes, I see it, but I'm creating something to help make it better. Yeah. You know, your your mission is very clear and it is so meaningful because every single person in our country in the United States mm -hmm is gonna, is gonna uh, if, if you live long enough to become a teenager and you've gone through the educational system and you're, and you're on your way into adulthood, I mean, you, this is essential, really, Thank for you. every person. Thank you. If you are, let's, if, if, if you are successful with this, achieving this, this sort of vision you have, okay, what would the world look like in three to five years? How, how would how are things how would things be different for uh, for for teenagers coming into the marketplace for people who maybe have gone through your program over mm -hmm. the course of the last several years? What what does the world look like if your vision comes to fruition? It looks like youth who who uh, turn out to be productive, um, profitable adults who have a career who have a focus and a purpose and not just, you know, in the streets or doing things that are unsavory. Mm -hmm. So what I want to do is I, I want to bring these skills to, you know, people so that they can build and help their lives. It's mm -hmm. really not about me at all. It's what I can give to society to help society uh, build better citizens and, you know, give them opportunities, skills, and things that they can do to help themselves. So a, a society with better citizens, I mean, I, I mean I'm, I'm immediately thinking this, this means uh, statistically a lower crime rate. Right, This exactly. means uh, a happier generation. Exactly. Of people, people who experience more happiness and joy in their life. Yes. Uh, economic uh, uh, security. Yes. Uh, 
reduce um, the poverty level because mm -hmm. they will have the skills to get jobs and keep them employed. It's amazing how those things are all connected. Yes. And I don't think that we pay enough attention to that. Mm. I don't think that we pay enough attention to the fact that uh, the, the state of the world right now, that we, we, if, if, you, if, you, if you trace it back, you might find that if people had a little bit more support, yeah. not only at home, but also from their community in terms of, in terms of building their career and, exactly. and all that, that you know, we might have a, a better situation. I think so. This is really something. I think so. So, okay, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> so do, do you have any uh, uh, workshops upcoming any uh, anything up? Any events upcoming that um, you know are important to to make sure that people are aware of? Um, well, the workshops come from uh, organizations or schools or police departments because mm -hmm. I work closely with the NYPD okay. as well um, for an anti-recidivism program. So oh, goodness, yeah. this teaches them, you know, uh, the kids who may be in gangs or you know just and for, don't for have any direct. And for those of us who or who maybe aren't familiar with that word, that means oh. that people who are released from prison and not not going back to prison, right, that right? to prevent okay. them from going back, coming in, going mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. So maybe with these skills, um, they can have a, a, a grasp on mm -hmm. you know what to do, how to how to approach getting into the workforce and and being a viable candidate. Mm -hmm. So what has the reception been like from? schools, I imagine, from high schools maybe, or from, uh, you know, maybe, I don't know, local city governments. I mean, mm -hmm. I know you're all over the place. So what, is, what, have some of the, what has some of the reception been towards your program from some of these other uh, organizations and institutions? Has it been positive? Do they yes. understand the vision? They, they really do. And I think that excites me, the mm -hmm. fact that I think when I talk about the program, my passion comes out for it because mm -hmm. I really, really love working with the youth the young adults. So when I describe my, my uh, vision to them and my program and my workshop to them, like they're excited because they see that what I'm doing, there's an element of difference in okay. there. It's different from what's offered already. Yeah. And if, even if uh, nonprofits or schools have a program, I'm not here to replace their program. I'm here to enhance their program. Okay. That's, I think that's very powerful. You're here to enhance. Mm -hmm. what, what, what about some of the, um, the teenagers who, who've had an opportunity to go through oh. your program, what, what have been maybe one or two of their, of their feedback? What, what, what's the word on the street from the, from the teen perspective? I know I'm, I'm not a teen, I'm not hip, but what's the word on the street from the teens? <laughs> you know? I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know about on the street because I'm not on the street, but <laughs> I'm not on the street, but, but what they do um, tell me is when I get um, testimonials from them, yeah, that's what it, I, I mean, it brings tears to my eyes, like literal tears to my eyes to hear mm -hmm. them talk about how I, I told them, you know, hey, listen, I love what you're doing. Sounds like you have some great leadership skills. You might want to hone those mm -hmm. leadership skills. Or, you know, they have complaints about a particular class. And I said, listen, you, um, if you, whatever, whatever you're complaining about in class, like step up and be a leader and do something about it. Don't just, you know, depend on others. So they're really getting, you know, different aspects from the workshop. Mm -hmm. You know, each child, you know, gets something different from it that makes them, you know, happy that they that they took it and it makes me so happy when they say that they're so glad that they took the workshop. It just hits me in the heart. Yeah. Oh, that's incredible. Pamela, I love it. I'm, <laughs> I'm curious, when you were a teen, did you, did you see yourself doing this? Not at you know? all. What did you want to be when you were a teen? I didn't know. That's the thing. Hmm. I still, well, I, I just recently <laughs> found out. Okay. Yeah, I, I just recently found out. But as a teen, I, my, you know, my parents, I didn't really know. Mm. So I did the things that, um, you know, I was lacking as a child. I gave, my husband and I gave to our sons. We exposed them to different careers and different industries so that they can make a choice mm -hmm. where they wanted to be. So mm -hmm. no, I didn't know. But I feel like I'm in my passion now and I yeah. think it's never too late. Yeah, absolutely. It is never too late. Mm -hmm. It is never too late. And I, you know, <sighs> Your your story, I think, is incredibly inspiring, and Thank you. your your passion for helping teens carve out a place yeah. for themselves, yes. you know, ha helping them carve out a future, yes. you know, for That's their it. lives. I think that uh, it, it it is something that I can't help but be excited about. That Thank you. I mean, it is beautiful, but then the work that you're doing and actually bringing that to fruition is mm -hmm. it's inspiring. It's yeah. admirable. More people, more people need to know about you and your mission. 
because it is seriously it is changing lives. Um, right. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you the last word. We have just a few minutes left. Is there anything that you want to make sure that people who are watching today's episode of Build Your Difference and are maybe hearing about you and this program for the first time? Is there anything that you want to make sure that you leave them with to, for today? Uh, I just want to say thank you to you for inviting me on the show. And I would like to leave, you know, parents, if you're struggling um, with your teens, um, I know it's tough raising kids, but if you could find the patience and the time to listen, to hear them, and to respond to them, because that's what a, a lot of kids need. They, they, kids go through a lot these days, you know, with social media, they go through a lot, and we need to uh, keep that in mind um, when we're raising them, that they are going through a lot, and we have to be there for them as parents. Uh, to help them get through. You know, I, I, on behalf of our audience, I really appreciate you being here. Thank I think you for we can all learn from what you're doing, Pamela. Thank you. You're changing lives out there. Thank you. All right. So, every day. <laughs> so, listen, it's that time again. And if you have any questions about today's segment, I want to remind you that you can see that information scrolling at the bottom of your screen. If you've been watching Skills to Pay the Bills in today's segment of Build Your Difference, thank you. Thanks for watching. And have a wonderful, wonderful week.